guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having an incredible day and in today's video I'm going to be sharing the entire process with you of how I finish a watercolor illustration, scan it, edit it in Photoshop and then upload my illustration to Society6 in order to place my original artwork onto different products like for example this little zipper bag and this tote bag and many many other things so that you can do it as well. I've been getting a ton of questions about my process, how I do this, on different social media channels in which I share my different products and from people visiting my shop and I really wanted to create a thorough video for you so that you can do it as well. You can start getting your work out there and experiencing what it's like to sell your work online. So stay tuned until the end because at the end I am going to list out pros and cons of selling on Society6 and similar little online shops like this one. Alright guys, so give me a like if you're excited to start to sell your work online and let's get into it. All right, so starting out with the actual art making process. Whenever I am creating a painting or an illustration with the intention of creating patterns with it or placing it on commercial products or stuff like that, I intentionally create it with little to no background. And the reason this is, is because it really facilitates the process of separating the actual painting or illustration from its background in the digital editing process, which I will explain in a bit. This is something that a lot of editorial illustrators or commercial illustrators do because the moment that you're sending your artwork to a client, many times those clients need it without the background so that they're able to place it on packaging design, on magazine or book layouts, etc. Today I'm not going to be giving you a step-by-step -step tutorial or explanation of my watercolor painting process because this is not quite the intention of today's video, but if you're interested in learning about my personal watercolor painting process or seeing watercolor painting tutorials, I totally recommend you check out my watercolor painting tutorials here on YouTube. I have a whole playlist about watercolor painting. And I do have at this point a whole entire playlist in regards to this topic if you're interested in learning about this medium. All of my supplies that you're seeing me use in this watercolor painting process will be linked down below in the description box in case you want to check them out for yourself. The watercolor paint set, the paper, as well as the specific paint brushes that I am using for this painting can be found down below. They are all excellent quality and also super affordable through the links that I am leaving. I highly recommend these brands to beginner and even intermediate watercolor artists because they are specifically the products that allowed me to progress my skills in the beginning. And if you use my links, I'll be receiving a tiny commission at no extra cost to you over the already designated price, which allows me to be able to keep creating this helpful content for you. Okay, so once your illustration or whatever artwork you're doing is completely finished and dry, it's going to be time for step number two, which is going to be to scan it. In my case, this means taking my artwork down to my basement and turning on my old Mac computer, which is the one that is connected to my scanner. Scanning itself is super easy, but you do have to make sure that you're scanning your artwork at at least 300 dpi, which is something that you're probably going to be able to check in your scanner software settings. So if you have never heard this term before, DPI stands for dots per inch or printer dots per inch. And if you're scanning an artwork with the intent of printing it out on any sort of material, then you do not want to scan your work at anything less than 300 DPI. This is going to ensure that your artwork is replicated in an excellent quality. And there are even artists and illustrators out there that scan their work at an even higher DPI than that. But 300 is the minimum. Now, I'm not going to recommend this particular scanner that I am using for this because while it's okay for the purposes that I am currently using it for, I would by no means say that it is the best scanner that I have ever used. 
but I am doing a ton of research at the moment because I am planning on investing on a better scanner slash printer in the future because I do want to at some point be able to offer and even print my own art prints. And so since I have done a ton of research lately, I am going to be leaving a couple of links below in the description box to excellent scanners that are highly recommended and used by other artists, specifically with the intention of scanning and printing artwork. Now, I did want to include in this video something that I consider super important and that I am frequently asked about, which is what is the difference between scanning and taking a picture of my artwork? So basically what I always recommend is to look at your artwork and if your piece is something that can be scanned, then definitely it's better if you scan it instead of taking a picture of it. The only situations in which I personally take pictures of my work is when I create canvas paintings or when I create a piece that has texture to it. When a piece has any sort of texture to it, it can't really be scanned properly because all of those little nooks and crannies throughout the piece, when they are scanned, they create a sort of shadow effect that can't really be removed easily in Photoshop. But whenever I have a painting that I want to replicate that was created on paper and is completely flat, I do my best to always scan it, no matter how large it is. I try to scan it in parts and then I put it back together in my photo editing software. All right, so once I have my high resolution image file on my computer, it is time to get that file into my photo editing software and start to edit and clean it. Personally, I use Photoshop and in this sort of digital editing phase of my process, I don't usually do much except separating my illustration from its background. Sometimes I up the contrast a tiny bit. In this case, I didn't at all. And if needed, I do a little bit of cleaning if I see that there is a little tiny piece of lint or hairs or something anywhere. I edit it out so that everything is nice and clean. Now, this isn't really a Photoshop tutorial or anything like that. I can definitely do one like that in the future. If anybody's interested, please let me know. But what I am going to say is that I personally prefer using the pen tool to create my selection as opposed to the magic wand selection tool because the pen allows me much more control. If you do not have a photo editing software on your computer and you do not want to pay for Photoshop, I highly recommend downloading a software called GIMP, which you can get online for either PC or Mac. This free software includes most, if not all of the Photoshop tools that could come in handy for you as an artist and even some professional illustrators and artists out there use it themselves. Okay, so once I have separated my illustration from my background, I take a quick moment to look for the information page that Society6 has set for us online in which they list out all of their products and the specific file sizes that our digital files should have in order to fit their products properly and for the image not to get distorted. And don't worry, you do not have to create a separate document for every single product that you want to place your design or your artwork on. What I like doing is creating a document in Photoshop that is a larger size than most of the products listed here by Society6 or that at least has the minimum recommended dimensions of 6,500 by 6,500 pixels. So by doing it in this way, by creating that larger file size right off the bat, you're saving yourself some trouble because Society6 is going to automatically place your design on all of the products that need that specific file size or smaller. So only the products that require a larger size are going to be left out. So once I have my Photoshop document in the exact size that I needed as recommended by Society6, I start experimenting and creating whatever pattern I want to place on my products. 
Something that I make sure while I am creating this pattern or design is to never ever stretch or enlarge my illustration. I can make it smaller if I need to for my pattern, but I never ever make it larger. If you stretch your scanned artwork, you're gonna risk losing some of its quality. So once I'm happy with my pattern or design, what I do is I make my background layer invisible and then I go ahead and save my file as a PNG. Saving your file as a PNG is going to allow you to keep your background transparent. Once you have your PNG file, it's time to move on to the fourth and final step of this process, which is uploading the design onto your shop. And in this case, I'm going to be showing you what I do once I'm in Society6. Creating your own shop at Society6 is super, super easy. You can do it today in a matter of minutes. And all you have to do once it is created is go into your user, click on the button on the top that says sell, and then it's going to ask you to upload your artwork. It takes a little bit of time to process your artwork because it is kind of placing it on all of the available products for the size that you have uploaded. But then you're going to move on to the next page in which you're going to title your artwork and your design. And it's going to ask you to put in some keywords so that people can find your design. And also you're going to add in a little description for it. And then finally, once you finish with that, you're going to be taken to the last page in which you're finally going to see your amazing artwork on all sorts of available products, which is incredibly fun. And at this point, what we have to do is fine tune everything. What I like doing is going one by one in each of the products that I want to make available with that design and actually going in and checking that the design or my artwork fits as best as possible in each of them. This does take a little bit of time, but it's totally worth it so that your design can really shine in all of the products that you want to make available. You may find that some particular products like stickers and t-shirts may look a little bit off depending on what kind of design or artwork you have placed on them. In this case, I go back to Photoshop, create a separate uh, file for them, and then re-upload my file onto only those specific products. And that is it in terms of how I upload my artwork onto Society6. Now, I just want to finish up this topic by saying that I am aware that shops like Redbubble and Society6 and Zazzle are definitely not for everyone. It's going to depend on your own personal objective as an artist, what you want to do with your art. I'm going to finish this up just by listing a few pros and cons about Society6 that I have found to be true throughout the months that I have been on this platform. Just in hopes that if you are thinking of opening up a Society6 or a Redbubble shop or whatever it is for yourself, this can help you make a decision whether it's right for you or not. So starting with the pros of Society6. To begin, it's a great way to start getting exposure for your artwork, especially if you're just starting to get it out there on the online world. It can serve as a type of online portfolio if you don't have a website yet. Another great thing is that having this type of shop is a great way to start testing and learning for yourself what it's like to actually market your work. Because if your objective is to start to sell your artwork in the future, you're going to have to get used to pushing it out into the public and marketing it. Because no matter how amazing your artwork is or what kind of artwork you create, if nobody sees it, then nobody's going to buy. And the last pro about this type of platform is that there isn't much work involved on your side in terms of fulfillment and taking payments and shipping out your products or anything like that because all of that is done by Society6. You don't really do anything on that end except uploading your designs. Moving on to the cons about this kind of online shop. 
The first one I have to say is that you actually make a very small percentage of each sale. And this is related to the fact that as I was mentioning before, you do not do much of the work in terms of actually producing the item and shipping it off. All of this is done by somebody else. So it's kind of obvious that you are not going to earn very much. The second con is that you definitely have to be consistent on the platform and you have to keep uploading designs. You are not going to start making sales by having only 10 designs up. You have to keep uploading and then slowly but surely you're going to start getting sales throughout time. You need to remember that patience is the name of the game when it comes to this type of thing. And the very last con that I'm going to be sharing today about this kind of online shop is that you definitely do need to put in the work and be persistent in terms of marketing it. Because if you're just uploading your stuff and you're just sitting there waiting throughout the months for Society6 or whatever platform to bring in the traffic to your shop, you're going to be waiting forever and your sales are going to be very few and far between. You have to keep in mind that all of these platforms are full of artwork by amazingly talented artists that have been there far longer than you have. They have been working at it very, very long and they have already sort of formed a history on the platform. So you have to go through that as well if you want to see any growth on that platform. You have to be consistent and you have to stay positive and the sales will come throughout time. Thank you so, so much for watching my video today. I really do appreciate it. I hope that it was helpful for you in some way. And I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Let me know if you're interested in starting to sell your work online. And if you have any questions, I would absolutely love to know where you're at. Do not forget to subscribe so that you can keep hearing from me and see you next Friday.